Okay, today we're going to start Unit 4, Lesson 24, and it's over nets and surface area. So we're finding the area of the entire outside of a shape. So our first question says, how can you find the sum of the areas of the faces of this box? So we're going to pretend that we're going to cut this box open along its edges and lay it out flat. How many faces does the box have? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six faces. What shapes are they? They are all going to be rectangles. How many different sizes of rectangles are there? Well, we have all the ones in the middle that are different colors. So as we look here, we can see that we have two that are nine by four. We have one that is nine by three. And we have one that is three by four. So there are three different size rectangles. How do we find the area of a rectangle? We do base times height. Okay, so just like we've been working on. What are the dimensions of the different faces? The front and the back, which would be our 9 by our 3. So that would be the one that I have labeled 1. 9 by 3. The top and bottom are going to be the ones I have labeled as 2. And that is 9 by 4. And the left and right are going to be the two small ones. And those are 3 by 4. So now we need to find the area of each, tank, each rectangle. Write the number of square centimeters of area inside each one shown in the diagram above. So I'm going to erase my numbers here. Our first one we're going to do 9 times 3. So we get 27. So that would be these. And we have 9 times 4, which would be 36, which are these. And then our small ones, 3 times 4 is 12, so that would be these. So the last one says, suppose you need to paint the box. Explain how you could find the area you need to cover. So if I want to paint all the outside of this, I would take and I would add up the area of each face. So in this case, I would do 36 plus 36 plus 27, plus 27, plus 12, plus 12. 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 7 is 19, plus 26, and 7, 28, 29, 30. So 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it's 150 square centimeters for the surface area. So, it tells us, in the problem on the previous page, a rectangular prism is cut and unfolded into a flat representation called a net. Each face of the prism is shown in the net. So when we take the box and we unfold it, the shape that it leaves us with is the net. You can use a net to find the surface area of some three-dimensional figures. The surface area is the sum of the areas of the faces of the figure. You can draw nets for other three-dimensional figures. The triangular prism below has two parallel triangular faces that are the same size and shape called bases. And three rectangular faces, the rectangular faces can be different sizes. And you can see one there. A py pyramid is a three-dimensional figure whose base is a polygon and whose other faces are triangles. The square pyramid shown below has a square base and four triangular faces that are the same shape and same size. So explain in our own words how you use a net to find the surface area of three-dimensional figure. So we use a net to see the shape of each face. So we can find the area, so find the area of each and add it up. It 
So, the next problem says, a package designer wants to find out how much leather is needed to cover the jewelry box shown below. The box is 12 centimeters long, 3 centimeters wide, and 5 centimeters high. Find the surface area of the box. So, we can draw and use a net of the box to help us find the surface area. We can also use a table to organize the information that we need. And you can see both of those here. So, using the information from the previous page, it wants to know if we look at the table and the model it, how could you find the total surface area of the rectangular prism? To find the area of all of it, we would add up each face. The areas of each face. What is the surface area of the prism? Show your work. So we would take each one and we'd add it together. So we would have 36 plus 36 plus 60 plus 60 plus 15 plus 15 and that gives a total area of 222 square centimeters. And a rectangular prism, which pair of faces have the same areas. So in this case, you're looking for the ones that are opposite. So it would be the top, bottom, the front, and back, and the two sides. How can you use your answer to problem tree 3 to find the surface area of a prism? Well, we could find the area of one of each, then multiply them by two, and then add. Because the front and back are the same, the top and bottom are the same, and the two sides are the same. So find one of each, multiply it by two. Number five, use the method from problem four to find the surface area. Show your work. So on this one, we would do two times 36 plus two times 60 plus two times 15. And when we add all those up, 72 plus 120 plus 30 equals 222 square centimeters. Explain how to find the surface area of a rectangular prism. Add the area of the faces. Okay, so I want you to use what we just did up above to find the surface area of each of the rectangular prisms below, and then we will go over them. So on number seven, I'm going to do the method like we did in number five. So I'm going to do two times 16 plus two times 16 plus 2 times 16. Because this is a square, it is a cube, so the front would be 4 by 4, which is 16. The sides would be 4 by 4, which is 16. And the top and bottom would be 4 by 4, which is 16. So when I do this, I would do 16 times 2, 12, 3. So that would give me 32 plus 32 plus 32. And then I would add all those up. So 246, 369, we'd get a total of 96 square centimeters. Okay. On the next one, we have the front, which would be 2 times 8 times 2 plus 2 times 10 times 2 plus 
2 times 2 times 8. Sorry, 2 times 8 would not be right. It would be 2 times the top and bottom, which would be 8 by 10. So we would have 16 here times 2 is 32. We would have 20 here times 2 would be 40. And we have 80 here times 2 would be 160. So when I add those up, I get 230. Two square feet. So on the next page we have the triangular prism shown below has a triangular base with a length of 12 centimeters and a height of 8 centimeters. The height of the prism is 11 centimeters. What is the surface area of the prism? So we can draw and label our net to find the surface area or we can use a table as we did before. So, using that information, number 9 was to know how many faces of the prism on the previous page are triangles. Explain how do you find the area of each triangle. So, when we looked, that we could see that there were two faces that were triangles. Okay. And then how do we find the area of each triangle? We would do 1 half base times height. So, in this case, we would do 1 half times 12 times 8. Half of 12 is 6. 6 times 8 would be 48 for one triangle. Okay, number 10 says how many faces of the prism? So number 11 says, what is the surface area of the triangle prism? We would need to add them up. So we have two triangles that are 48 plus two rectangles that are 110 plus one rectangle that is 132. And we add those up to get a total of 448 square centimeters. Explain how to find the surface area of any triangular prism. Mm -hmm. Find the area of all the faces and add them up. So, use what we just did to answer 13 and 14. Okay, so for our number 13, we're going to do 1 half times the base, which is 6, times the height, which is 5.2. So when we do half of 6, it is 3. 3 times 5.2. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 5 is 15. So it would be 15.6. We would then multiply that 2 by 2 to get the other side. So it's 12, 10, plus 1 is 11. 2 plus 1 is 3, 1 different place, it would be 31.2 for the triangles. Then for our rectangles, we have 36 times 6. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 3 is 18, 19, 20, 21. It's 216. There are 3 of those that are that size. 6 times 3 is 18. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6, so then I would add these two together, we get 2, 9, 4 times 3 is 12, sorry, no, that's 7, and 6 is nothing as 6, so 679.2 square inches. Okay, then for our next one, we do the same thing. So we would have 1 half times 8 times 15. Half of 8 is 4. 4 times 15 is 60. So we have two of those. So that would be 120. Then we do our rectangles, which is 20 by 17. And then we have 20 by 8. And then we have 20 by 15. So 20 by 
20 by 15 would give us 300. 20 by 8 would give us 40. And 20 by 17 would give us 340. We add those up. So that's 0, 8, 6, plus 120. That's 0, 10, and 800. So it would be 800 square feet. Correction, 2 times 8 would be 160. So if we re-add that, that would be 0, this would be 10, this would be 6, 7, 8, and then 800 plus 120 would be 920 square feet. Okay, the next question says, Rebecca is planning to make a model of a pyramid for geography project. The length of each edge of the base is 6 inches and the height of each triangular face is 5 inches. How much cardboard will Rebecca need to make the pyramid? So we can label our net to find the surface area and then we can use a table as well. So using the information from the previous page, how many faces does the pyramid have? Well, it's got four triangular faces and one square on the base. Number 16, how do you find the area of the base of the pyramid? You would do base times height, which in this case would be 6 times 6. Number 17, how do you find the total area of the triangular faces of the pyramid? They're all the same shape and same size, so that we can find the area of 1, and we would do 1 half base times height, which in this case would be 1 half times 6 times 5. Half of 6 is 3. 3 times 5 is, is 15. And then there are 4 of those, so we'd multiply it by 4. So 15 times 4 would give us 60. Number 18, what is the surface area of the pyramid? We would add up our 6 times 6, which is 36 for our base, plus the 60 for the 4 triangles, which would give us a total of 96 square centimeters, I believe. Number 19, explain how to find the surface area of a rectangle pyramid. Find the area of all the faces. And add them up. So, use what we just did up top to answer 20 and 21. Okay, so if we're doing one half times the base, which is 60, times the height, which is 50, we would do half of 60, which is 30, and 30 times 50, which gives us 1,500. And then our base would then be 60 times 60, which would give us 3,600, 3, and then I would add those together. So I get 0, 0, 6 plus 5 is 11, 3 plus 1 plus 1 is 5. And I would get... Correction, I forgot to multiply my triangle by 4 to get 4 of them. So if we multiply this by 4, that would give us 6,000 plus 3,600. So that now, when I add them up, I get 98, 6 hundred square inches. And that goes up here. Okay, then for your bottom one, we have a base of 18 by 7, and we have a triangle of 1 half times the base, which is 7, times the height, which is 13. So 8 times 7 is 56, 7 times 1 plus 5 is 12, so we get 126, half of 7 would be 3.5, and then 13 times 3.5, we get 15, plus 1 is 6, half of 0, done with this, done with this, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 1 is 3, so we get 5. 15 
and four. So four fifty five. So four fifty five times four, because there's four of them. So that would be twenty. Be twenty two. 16, 17, 18, that would be 18, 20, plus the 126, so we get 6, 4, 9, 1, 1,946 square meters. Okay, correction again, the 455 is only for two triangles, so that would be 10, 10 plus 1 is 11. 8 plus 1 is 9, so that would be 9, 10. The other triangle is 1 half times 18 times 10. So half of 18 is 9, 9 times 10 is 90. There are two of them, so that would be 180. So now I would add up 9, 10 plus 180 plus 126. So when I get that, I would get 6, 15, 16, 17, 9, 10, 11, 12. I also forgot to put my decimal in here, so this would be 45.5. So when I multiply this, it would be 91. So if I fix that, this would be 91. Sorry about this, guys. Kind of a mess today. 6 plus 1 is 7, 17, 18, 19. And that would be 397 and 397 square meters is your answer.